one of the one of the things I wanted to uh, mention was imagination is a very wide thing. You can imagine almost anything. You can imagine. My wife is a great fan of Star Trek, and of course they have the warp drive on the Enterprise. Now, the, yeah, you can imagine warp drive, but you can't. And there may be people who try to create a warp drive any more than you can map than you can create a, a, a wormhole. Inception was a great movie to be able to create these imaginative possibilities, but sometimes our imagination is way beyond our creative technical skills and talents and knowledge to achieve. Our Imagination is always waiting for our creativity to catch up with it. Now, I've been very lucky. I've had a lot of creative people around my life, good friends like William, and who've taught me a lot about creativity by just understanding that creativity is not just one expression. You can create and you can imagine in multiple mediums. Like, for example, you can create in mathematics and numbers. Some of the most imaginary things available at the moment are in these complicated equations that I certainly don't understand. And the language that we have can't explain it to us. This is why there's always a gap between ordinary people and the highest level mathematicians. They imagine in a different language that's not accessible to us. Other people imagine in musical composition. They write music. You have your Bach, your Mozart, your Beethovens of the world, Wynton Marsalis, and of course William Wade. And in this domain, being able to visualize a world with music is a special kind of visualization. Just like it is with mathematics, a special kind of, of visualization. And then, of course, you have the imagination through language. And in a sense, metaphors are an imagination enhancer. They allow you to see something, because we're visual people. And we visualize in an imaginative way. We can visualize the past. We can visualize there's a Napoleon bust for some reason at the other end of the bar. We can visualize Napoleon, even though we haven't seen him, and even though we've seen photographs, in our mind we can do that. We can go in those places. So one uh, example is of this dynamic between imagination and creativity is someone that I recently uh, got to know, named Edward Cassegrant, who's an American sculptor, designer, architect, and a great fan of one of my books called Heart Talk. He had uh, a client come to him who'd had the heart maker taken out because it no longer worked. So he shows up in the office of the sculptor and says, uh, I've got this old pacemaker, can you make a piece of art with this? And so that's a challenge. He said, yes, I can make a piece of art with this. And he made a piece of art called One Heart Beat. And I want to leave that image with you, and then at the end I'll show a photograph of what Edward created with that old dead pacemaker. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I, I think I've probably talked long enough here, for, at least to begin with. And we'll turn it over to uh, William. And of course, William, I think, has uh, a lot of things to say as a uh, doctor of psychology. He's been a psych psychologist for 40 years since 1973, when he started and got his PhD in 1978. And he's been playing the saxophone since he was 15 years old. Uh, that was after Columbus discovered America, not that long. <laughs> and so he brings that special kind of blend of musical talent and 
improvisation with the background of understanding a lot about the human psyche. William. Thank you. Well, that was a very imaginative well, talk. <laughs> Uh, as Christopher mentioned, I, had, I wear two hats. I'm both a psychologist and a musician. Uh, the musician part came first, and the first memories that I have are being in the crib and having a small red radio beside me that my parents used to turn on so that I would stay in the crib and not bother them while they were out in the other room. So, what's happened in my life is that I've been kind of taken over by music. Music has always it's been like a tidal wave moving over me. I have always had a very visceral, very emotional sense with the music. I remember as a little guy, um, Saturday mornings they would have John Philip Sousa for half an hour playing march music, and I would dutifully march around in a circle for half an hour with John Philip Sousa. And I remember the joy of that, just the movement and the life, the liveliness that came out of that. Um, my mother, bless her soul, tried to start me on piano at four, and four was not a good time to start piano. I got up to about, I guess I was around eight years old, and I was given the opportunity to uh, join the band, and they had clarinets. So I became a clarinetist, which I didn't really care for very much, but at 12, I was given a saxophone, and saxophones and I somehow get along very well. By the time I was 14, I had started my own little band and was playing in, for birthday parties and uh, various functions. Excuse me. 